we're going to look at making some basic edits to an architectural visualization render from SketchUp and Enscape. We will also be performing some local adjustments with the help of an object ID map. First, let's modify the overall contrast of the scene. I could do this using a curves adjustment. I'm going to add one using Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. It's worth noting that Affinity Photo does not have destructive adjustments. Regardless of how an adjustment is added, whether it's by keyboard shortcuts, the top menu, or the layers panel, the adjustments are always non-destructive. I'll click drag and create a couple of nodes on the curves graph here to add more contrast into the scene. I'm now going to go out to my file browser and click drag to bring in the object ID pass. I can release the mouse button to place the object ID pass as an image layer. Image layers are non-destructive containers for image data, and this helps us reduce the saved document file size rather than converting this to an uncompressed raster layer. I'll need to line this image up. To do this, I'll select the Move tool using V on the keyboard, enable snapping up here, then click drag to snap the image into place. Since we want to be able to reference this layer without constantly having to hide and show it, the best practice here is to move it to the bottom of the layer stack. We can do this by click dragging it to the bottom, like so. Or, alternatively, we could use Shift Command left square bracket on Mac or Shift Control left square bracket on Windows. Now that the object ID layer is no longer rendering above the main render layer, I can isolate or solo it at any time when I want to make a selection from it. I can option click on Mac, alt click on Windows to isolate this layer. Then I will choose the flood select tool from the tools panel. There is an anti-alias option here on the context toolbar, which I will enable to give the selected areas a softer outline that will look better when masked. I also want to add multiple areas to my selection, so I'll change the mode to Add here. Do bear in mind that the hint line at the very bottom will provide you with various keyboard modifiers you can use to quickly toggle between the different modes as well. Let's zoom in and make a selection of the rocks in the foreground. I'll single click on each rock to add it to the selection. When I get to the far set of rocks here, I need to alter the tolerance, as the default value of 20% has caused the selection to spill over into the paving here. I'll undo with Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows. Then I can actually left click and hold the mouse button and drag left or right to alter the tolerance dynamically. So I'll drag left until I remove the surrounding areas from my selection. Then I can release the mouse button. With my selection now made, I can click on any other layer to exit solo mode. I'll add a second curves adjustment, which will now be masked based on my active selection, as you can see on the thumbnail here. I no longer need the active selection, so I will use Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows to deselect. I can now use the curves adjustment to darken the rocks and bring the highlight intensity down. Let's carry out the same procedure and create a selection of the building. Once again, I will isolate the object ID layer. Then I'll reduce the tolerance to 1%. Zoom in and single click on the building. The issue we have here is that areas of the bright blue color are being blocked by other colors. All I need to do here is uncheck Contiguous on the context toolbar, then click again to make the selection. As before, we can click on any other layer to exit solo mode. Then I'll add another curves adjustment and finally deselect. I can now just add a node somewhere in the middle here and bring it up to give the building a general tonal boost. That's the main edit finished, but let's say we wanted to have a couple of different options and be able to quickly move between them. For this, we can use Snapshots. I can show the Snapshots panel by going to Window, Snapshots, 
and it will appear down in the bottom right. There is a default background snapshot that is created for us whenever we begin editing. It stores a compressed snapshot of the image in its original state. I can use the Add Snapshot button here and call this Summer. Now let's create an autumnal version of this scene. I'm going to hue shift some of the colors in the image, but crucially, I want to avoid modifying the building. Rather than creating another selection from scratch, a quick tip here is to command click the thumbnail of this curves adjustment on Mac or control click it on Windows. This reloads the selection based off the mask here. And so now all we need to do is go to select, invert pixel selection, and we have the rest of the image selected rather than the building. I can quickly add an HSL shift adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows, which will be masked based on this selection. Then I'll deselect. On the dialog here, I'll switch over to the yellows, then increase the hue shift slightly and bring down the overall saturation. I might also select the curves adjustment affecting the building, and delete it to restore the building's darker appearance that it had initially. I also want to create some drama in the sky. To do this, I'll first solo the object ID layer. Then I'll use W to switch to the flood select tool, and with contiguous mode disabled and my tolerance set to 1%, I can simply click here to make a selection of the black sky. I'll then select the top layer to exit solo mode, and I'll go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Sharpen, Clarity. This is a live filter layer. It behaves very much like an adjustment layer, and you'll notice it has been masked based on my active selection. I'll bring the Strength slider all the way up to enhance texture in the sky detail. I will then create another snapshot called Autumn. With my two saved snapshots, I can click one to select it, then click the Restore Snapshot button to restore that document state. I could even restore the original background snapshot. If I wanted to create another edit from scratch, these snapshots are saved with the document file, so any time I reopen this document in the future, I can quickly move between the snapshots to explore the different edits. Anyway, that was a short video on performing some basic architectural visualization edits. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.